All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, so now I would talk about uh, something in deep generative models. I know it's still early in the course, so a lot of these terms may not make sense right now, but later on in the term, you would get to know more about these. Uh, so from now on, I think so most of the speakers would talk about topics that would involve original research in some manner. Right, so what I'll do is I'll uh, introduce a specific part of uh, deep generative models uh, at a very high level. So this is what is called as uh, normalizing flows. So uh, I will not go into all technical details here, but uh, Mostly in machine learning, what we are interested in doing is uh, learning a di distribution. So what we have is, uh, we have a bunch of samples. So we have some data, let's say. So this is my data. And I want to find out uh, what distribution created that data, right? So some part of this you already did in your first assignment, the third question, where what you had was that you had some data yi, uh, which was coming from some function f of xi and there was some noise term. And this f was what you were estimating uni using linear regression. So you were doing some sort of axi plus bi. Or in fact, I think Pascal used w. Right. So here, uh, in, in the third question, what you did was you used uh, likelihood, ne negative log likelihood on this epsilon i. Right. So how you did was that this epsilon i was distributed as a Gaussian random variable. Right? So how many of you know what a Gaussian distribution is? All right, so almost everybody knows that. All right, so basically, uh, when this was Gaussian distributed, what you did was that you did, uh, you tried to uh, fit a Gaussian distribution over this epsilon i. So basically what you did was you did something like yi minus f of xi, which is epsilon i, and you said that this was distributed as normal zero sigma square, let's say, right? So what normalizing flows essentially do is the following. Uh, so I'll draw a picture. So let's say I have a random variable x, uh, which is normal zero sigma square, right? So how I'll draw this is that it is some sort of this thing where this is zero, right? And I want to, there is another random variable which is normal mu sigma square, right? So if I were to use a similar scale, let's say this is something like this, where this is sigma square. Oh, sorry, mu. So if I want to transform this random variable x, which has distribution normal zero sigma square, so it is a Gaussian at mean zero and variance sigma square, and I want to move it to a random variable, which is y, uh, how do, what, is the, what does this function look like? Right, so what function do I learn here? So I say this function is t, such that when I take samples from x, the resulting value is from y. And we know in this case, it is simple that y uh, is just x plus mu. So why it is x plus mu is because it is just shifted by some mu, right? I've just shifted the original Gaussian. So what normalizing flows does do is, uh, is essentially similar thing. They try to learn this transformation tree, T. So basically, in normalizing flows, what happens is that you take some random variable x. So this random variable x is known. So you can take it as Gaussian. And you have some y, which is unknown. So this is what is from your data. So here I assume that I know the form, but in reality, like you only get some data. So you do not know what the, what the distribution might be. It might be Gaussian, it might not be not. It might not be Gaussian. So what normalizing flows do is they learn a specific kind of this function so that it can transform one distribution to the other distribution which is of interest to you, right? So here, uh, I mean, this is the larger uh, picture of normalizing flows. Of course, there are certain, uh, uh, more technicalities involved, which you, you can think of it later on. So how in practice this is done is that usually you have some x, you feed it into some neural network which you design, and then you get some y. And the whole research then focuses around how you can build these neural networks properly so that you get the distribution that is, that is what you require. 
right? And in recent years, this has been uh, uh, this has been a very hot field, uh, and a lot of research is being done, especially in the last two or three years. And this only started in around 2015 in machine learning, and in 2018-19, it has really taken off. Uh, targeting many areas in machine learning. So this is a hot topic. So some uh, research things that you can do here are the following. So one of the things that you can do which would constitute a good project is a survey. So there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of um, papers that are coming out in, uh, in normalizing flows these days. And so you can do a survey, you can read about what, what is happening. A good thing about this would be that since there is a lack of a survey, uh, this might, if you write a good paper, might be a publishable material. The second is that even if you cannot publish it, if you write a survey, you would be, uh, you would know about a topic that is really hot in machine learning and you would know, get to know a lot of fields in machine learning thereby. The second thing you can do is, uh, is a very simpler analysis. So I mean, usually in normalizing flows, what you do is, your aim is to capture some unknown distribution, and so you have to be intelligent about how you design this T. But one easier thing that you can analyze is that uh, you have a Gaussian, and you want to transform it into, let's say, a mixture of Gaussian. So my, the whole, my whole uh, aim is that I have a single Gaussian, and I want to transform it into a mixture. So if I were to draw a mixture here, a mixture looks like just multiple peaks like this, right? So here the question would be, what does this T look like? So can you give me a closed form of T? That if you use this function, let's say a polynomial function or a piecewise linear function or something like that, would that essentially move it to a mixture of Gaussian? So I know there are certain results there. In fact, I found some of the results here, but this might be a very interesting direction as well. Because then once you have this T, you can then extend it to some other distributions, let's say exponential distributions or student T distributions, right? And uh, I mean, uh, in this topic, you can go from simpler projects to really involved projects. So there are a lot of theoretically open questions as well. Uh, I'm, I won't introduce them right now because uh, you're not aware of a lot of uh, these definitions, but like one of the things that I'm working on currently is how to capture uh, heavy-tailed behavior. So by heavy-tailed, I mean like here, this part is called the tail of, the, of a distribution. And why heavy-tailed distribution? Because let's say, for example, in analyzing financial capital markets, uh, there you need distributions that have heavier tails because the risk is always in the tails. And so there you need to capture distributions that are heavy tail. So here the uh, application is financial capital markets. Right, so I mean, you do not necessarily have to do this, but you can think, uh, think of doing a project where you can look at normalizing flows and try to comment on what are the different applications where they might be helpful and how you think you can go about it, right? So these are some of the, pro uh, some of the topics. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a, a more extended lecture later on in the term on normalizing flows where I will talk much more in depth about this. Until then, you would have sufficient background knowledge to understand this more. So that lecture will be sometime in July. But uh, yeah, feel free to contact me if this area interests you and I can give you more knowledge about this. Thanks.